An object three centimeters tall is gonna be placed four centimeters in front of a diverging lens. The diverging lens has a focal length of negative two centimeters. So that's one difference between converging lenses and diverging lenses. The diverging ones will always have a negative focal length. And that makes the formulas work out well. Okay, a diverging lens will bow out at the top and bottom. So it's going to have its narrowest section in the middle. We want to put a three centimeter object four centimeters in front. So that would be like this. That's our object. So our distance here is four. All right, let's put our focal points down. They're just going to be two centimeters away from the lens on both sides. Okay, so two centimeters, two centimeters. F1 and F2, we can do that. All right, now, what rays are going to be important for making this drawing? Well, just like before, one ray that is always helpful is just send an array from the tip of your object through the center of your lens because that ray doesn't get deflected. There we go. All right, that's a start, but we need other rays too. So we can send a ray parallel to the principal axis. What ends up happening is that ray is going to be bent. With a converging lens, it was bent through the focal point on the right side. But in this case, what's going to happen is it will bend away. It won't converge, it'll diverge. And to find the angle that it diverges with, you just look at the, um, the focal point here and do a construction of a line from the focal point to where your ray hits the lens, and then you just keep that going. That's going to be the direction of the deflection. But that's only if your ray comes in parallel to the principal axis. All right, now that's really technically all you need to do the construction because you have an intersection here with those two rays. And now you could argue that this is going to be the image location. Now, is it real or virtual? It is virtual. Now, why again is it virtual? Because that ray that diverges away from the focal point, it never really goes through the point of intersection. It just appears to a person who's looking at it from this side they would think that that the ray came from the image but it didn't really it came from the object and it was bent in such a way as to make it look like it came from the image it's an upright virtual image All right, there is one more ray we can draw, though, one more ray of interest. That would be one where you start at the tip of your object, 
and you head toward the focal point. The focal point on the right. So we're headed that way. Okay, but we don't end up getting to that focal point because of the bending of the rays. So that ray is going to diverge from its original angle. But the way it ends up being diverged is it just goes parallel to the principal axis from there. Now that ray is going to appear like it came from a different location. It's going to appear like it came from the tip of the image. So see, all these three rays are in agreement that they all appear like they came from a different source from where they actually came from. Let's do the mathematics now to confirm what we had found. We want to use the thin lens formula. which says 1 over DO plus 1 over DI equals 1 over F. All right, so distance of our object was 4 centimeters. We want to find the distance of the image and we'll plug in our focal length, but we can't forget the negative. If we didn't put the negative in, it would think it was a converging lens, but it's diverging lens, so we have to put in the negative. The distance of the image is negative 1.33 centimeters. Now, it's important to understand the meaning of the signs in these types of problems. So for a diverging lens, when we get a negative image distance, it's in front of the lens. If you recall, the convention was that the side the object is on is called the front. And then the other side was behind or the back of the lens. So a negative means that the image is going to be on the same side as the object. If we look back at some of our results from the past, that convention was the same. See like here, for example, we found that the image was a positive 3. So the image was on the opposite side of the object. Here, the image was on the same side as the object and the image distance was negative, right? So it's that same convention. All right, next let's find the magnification of this lens. That's our formula for it. All right, so we discovered our image distance was negative 1.33, and our object distance was 4. Therefore, our magnification is one-third. And it's positive, which means the object's orientation is not reversed. It's not flipped upside down. Then we can use the other formula for magnification, which is HI over HO. And we can solve for the height of the image. So just do one third equals HI over three centimeters because the original object was 
three centimeters. So HI is clearly one. And we just want all that to agree with our picture, which it looks like it does.